Hi, boys and girls. Well, today our book is Alphabet of Space. Hmm. So if it's the alphabet, what do you think we're going to use? Letters or numbers? You're right. We're going to use letters. Letters make up the alphabet. Alphabet of Space. And it's written by Laura Gates Galvin. And it's illustrated by Higgins Bond. I think the illustrations are awesome, very realistic. And I can even see some letters of the alphabet on our cover. Can you see them? Yes, if you said J, R, and T, you are correct. I wonder what these letters are going to be used for in this book. Well, let's find out. We're going to turn to our title page. And big title page with a great big satellite space station on there. A. A is for astronauts dressed in space suits with life support packs, helmets, gloves, and space boots. So those are all pieces of equipment needed to be an astronaut. B. B is for binoculars. You can see the stars, gaze at the moon, and maybe see Mars. So if you do not have a telescope, binoculars are another tool that allow you to see up into outer space. C. C is for comet, a bright object in the sky. It's made of dust and ice. Have you seen one streaking by? So a lot of the times people will think these are falling stars, but they are mainly comets or meteorites traveling through space. D. D is for dwarf stars. They're not very bright. Most can't be seen, even on a clear night. E. E is for Earth. Millions of miles from the sun, it's the planet where we live eat, sleep, work, and have fun. So a dwarf star is a very small star that isn't very bright and can't even really be seen. F. F is for full moon, big, round, and bright. Once every month, it lights up the night. And we have to remember as scientists that it is not a light source of its own but is reflecting the sunlight onto the earth. G. G is for gravity, causing things to fall down. There's no gravity in space, so things float around. H. H is for Hubble Telescope, a famous satellite. It circles the earth all day and all night. I. I is for ISS, largest of all the space stations, a project led by the US and supported by many nations. J. J is for Jupiter, which is not at all small. It's a very big planet. The biggest of all. K. K is for Kepler. He discovered some rules, like the movement of planets, which is now taught in schools. L. L is for Lunar Rover. It served a great purpose. The astronauts drove it upon the moon's surface. Pretty neat to be able to drive a lunar mobile. We remember Luna also means moon. M. M is for Mars, a planet that's red. There's no life on Mars, or so it is said. N. N is for Neptune, colored deep shiny blue. 
it has a white streaky cloud. That's a great dark spot too. Wow. Here's that great dark spot up the top here. Pretty neat. It is very shiny blue, that planet. O is for observatory, a place for stargazing. If you look through the telescope, what you'll see is amazing. So when you go to an observatory, they have very powerful telescopes that will let you see closer and deeper into space. P is for payload specialist, a spacecraft guest, not always an astronaut, but a trained scientist. So scientists who go up into space may not necessarily be trained astronauts, but someone who knows what they're doing out in outer space or in, is looking for information. Q is for quasars, the most intense source of light, billions of light years from Earth and unbelievably bright. R is for rocket. It's an absolute must to launch a spacecraft with its powerful thrust. So the rocket is the part of the spacecraft that launches it into space. S. S is for Saturn, surrounded by shimmer. When the rings that surround it catch sunlight, they glimmer. And glimmer is another word for shine and sparkle. T. T is for telescope. It makes planets look clear. Although they are far, they look very near. U is for U.S. moon landing. In the year 1969, man walked on the moon for the very first time. V is for Venus, a planet that's far. It is very bright and shines like a star. So Venus is a planet that's pretty close to the sun. W is for white dwarf star. Most are not very bright, but one called Arandi can be seen in the night. X is for X-15. It's impressive indeed. It holds the world record for winged aircraft speed. So it's the fastest plane. Y is for year. When one year is done, the earth will have traveled once round the sun. You know, that's one year, 365 days for the earth to orbit around the sun. Z is for zenith, a point way up high, directly above us, far up in the sky. And then here's a glossary of all the different words within the book so we could understand their meaning. It's very important to understand word meanings. Well, like the book showed us on the letter R, there are all kinds of different kinds of spacecraft. And we know that shapes make up our rocket ships and our spacecraft. Like for example, on here we can see four cylinders are being used. So that's a 3D shape. We have one, two, three, four cylindrical shapes. But on the side here, we can see two right angle triangles. And we can see down here another shape that we have. So there are a lot of shapes involved in space travel and spacecraft. So what you will find in your packet is you have a sheet that looks like this. It is a rocket ship or spacecraft that is made up of different 2D shapes. And it's your job to find your other page that looks like this. It has shapes on it. Cut out the shapes and match them where they go. 
Once you have cut out all the shapes and matched them where they go correctly, glued them down, there are some questions on the side. It says, how many squares? Well, count up the squares that you've used and write the number. How many triangles? So count up all the triangles that are used on your spacecraft and write the number. How many rectangles? Find the rectangles used on your spacecraft and write the number. And then how many shapes all together and write the number. All right, scientists, go and have fun matching the correct shapes to build a vehicle that will travel into outer space. <laughs>